Assalamu alaikum dear participants uh, welcome to the session of textual study of the Quran we had studied verses 149 to 168 of surah al imran in our previous session and today we will be completing their literal and idiomatic translation so starting off ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu in tuti'u al ladhina kafaru yaruddukum ala aqabikum fatanqalibu khasirin so ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu means o you who believe in is if Tuti'u, you obey. Al-lazina, those who kafaru, disbelieved. Yaruddukum, they will turn you. Allah upon. Aqabikum, your heels. So, aqab is the plural of aqab. And aqab means your heel. So, kum is your, of course, uh, in the plural. So, the idiomatic translation would be that, Oh, believers, if you, if you follow those who have disbelieved, they will turn you around your heels which means that they will revert you back to disbelief and then fatanqalibu khasirin fa therefore tanqalibu you will end up khasirin in loss so though oh who you believe if you follow those who have disbelieved they will turn you on your heels they will turn you back and so you will end up as losers balillahu maulakum bal in fact or why not you can say uh, allah god maulakum your guardian so maula is guardian kum is yours balillahu maulakum uh, you god is in fact your guardian wa and huwa he khair best nasirin the helpers so and he is the best of helpers god is your guardian and he is the best of helpers sanulqi so sanulqi means the, the word sa the way it occurs here it actually refers uh, to something that's going to happen in the near future so therefore it's translated as soon sanulqi would mean soon we will implant fi in kulub hearts so qulub is the plural of qalb and qalb means a heart so sanulqi fi qulub will mean soon we will implant in the hearts allazina those who kafaru disbelieved a rob rob means awe so soon we will plant awe in the hearts of those who have disbelieved this is how idiomatically we will translate it bima bima means because ashraku billah they associated partners with god ashraku billah ma lam ma is that lam is not yunazzil bihi revealed in their favor sultana any sanction so sanulqi fi qulub allazin soon we shall implant in the hearts of those who have disbelieved or so we will implant or in the hearts of those who have disbelieved because they have associated partners with god about which he did not reveal any sanction about which he did not reveal any argument so the word sultan in arabic uh, is used in the for, in, in this form it means sanction it means uh, an argument it means uh, something that is of the nature of a reason wa ma'wa hum an-nar wa and ma'wa means the uh, the place hum there's uh, ma'wa means the ultimate place annar the fire so ma'wa hum annar would mean and their ultimate place will be the fire wa bi'sa and what an evil maswa resting place az-zalimin for those who are unjust to their souls so the word zalama or zalim the way it is used in the quran uh, this is something that we often come across and uh, you may also note this down that in the quran the word is used in the meaning of zalimun li nafsihi that someone who is unjust to his own soul and this is often used when a person uh, indulges in polytheism because he denies the right of his soul the soul uh, the, the uncom- uncontaminated soul the pure soul always is something that cherishes monotheism but when you deny this right of monotheism to the soul you are being unjust to the soul so that is why the quran often uses this term uh, to mean that you are an oppressor you are unjust to your own soul because your own soul yearns for monotheism but you don't 
follow it. So, Bi'sa Maswa Zalimeen, and what a bad abode and what a bad resting place it is for those who are Zalim, for those who are unjust to their souls. وَلَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهُ إِسْتَحُسُّونَهُمْ بِإِذْنِهِ So remember this is a place in Surah Al-Imran in which the aftermath of the Battle of Uhud, the impact it had on a lot, a lot of weak Muslims and whose faith was bordering on hypocrisy because uh, they were being uh, influenced by the propaganda of the people of the book. Then they would say that how come these are followers of a prophet and they have lost in a battle, they could, should not have lost in a battle. And uh, again, this is something uh, that happened because of the misplanning of a group of people. They were told not to leave their positions in this battle, but they, out of their own greed for the spoils of war, they left their place prematurely and this resulted in a defeat for the Muslims. So the Almighty has said that the, his law is the same for all. If you don't obey the Prophet, then you're going to suffer the reversal. You're going to suffer the defeat. But of course, this was taken uh, to advantage by the people of the book who, saw, who had a wonderful uh, excuse to uh, mislead the masses by saying that prophets of God, they never lose a battle. So how come he, this, this, in this particular instance, they have lost a battle? So this is a whole uh, comment that is being made that uh, the reason that Muslims lost that battle was because they disobeyed their messenger and at the same time they were weak Muslims who were found amongst them and their weakness was to be exposed so that they can either overcome this weakness or they succumb to it. So, وَلَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهُ إِسْتَحُسُّونَهُمْ بِإِذْنِهِ wa and لَقَدْ indeed صَدَقَكُمُ means uh, it, it became true, truthful. Kum uh, your صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ means uh, God's promise became truthful to you and وَعْدَهُ of course is His promise. So, وَلَقَدْ صَدَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَهُ would mean that indeed when God fulfilled his promise and is tahusunahum be iznihi when tahusunahum would mean that uh, you were really routing them putting them to the sword be iznihi with his directive with God's directive so remember in the battle of Uhud initially the, pro the Almighty had promised them victory if they behave themselves and follow his directives so initially we know that in this battle Muslims were winning and they were they had really routed the disbelievers and that is precisely what is being stated here that with God fulfilled his promise in the initial part of the battle when you were routing them means that you were uh, really uh, putting them to the sword and killing them with God's leave with God's permission with God's directive this is the initial part of the battle, but then something ensued, and that is hatta is a fashiltum, hatta until fashiltum. Fashiltum means, uh, or iza means when. Fashiltum means when you showed weakness. Wa and tanazatum fil amr. You differed amongst yourselves. Tanazatum fil amr. You differed in matters of the battle. Wa and asaitum. Asaitum means you disobeyed. Mim ma arakum. After that, mimbadima, after ma arakum, ma arakum mean after he showed you, and he, after God showed you, ma to hibbun, what you had desired. So you had seen victory by your eyes because you were winning, and uh, but uh, because of the fact that fashiltum, the first thing is mentioned as fashiltum, that you showed weakness, and then what the fil amr, this is the second thing, that you started to differ between yourselves. Of course, this, is, this relates to the, the fact that a group of uh, swordsmen who were stationed at a particular post, uh, they were told not to move from there, but they differed amongst themselves. Very few of them, they remained in, in, in that post and many of them deserted that post. So the second thing is mentioned is, zartum fil amr. You differed amongst yourselves regarding amr, regarding the battle. وَعَسَيْتُمْ And you disobeyed, although the word disobeyed is used and the uh, uh, the person whom they disobeyed is not mentioned, but it is obvious that they disobeyed the Prophet. And then it is said, Mimbadi ma arakum. Mimbad after ma when arakum God showed you ma wa, ma that tohibun you liked. You like. So this happened that after God showed you what you like, 
of course referring to the victory uh, they, which they were actually achieving in the initial part of the battle. And then it is said, Min kum man yuridu dunya, min kum among you, man, those who yuridu intend a dunya, this world. So among you are those who, in, who intend this world, which means that there are um, those among you who just have, uh, who just think that whatever they can gain from this world is sufficient. They don't have any worry of the hereafter. Wa min kum man yuridu al akhirah. Wa and min kum among you, man, those who yuridu intend al akhirah, the hereafter. So it's like a comparison that there were some among you who intended this world, which, mean, which means that they, all that they had was to gain the benefits of this world. And ma min kum man yuridu al akhirah. And there were those among you who wanted the benefits of the hereafter. Summa sarafaka. Sarafakum anhum liyabtaliyakum. Summa then sarafakum. So sarafakum means God turned you away, turned you away anhum from them liyabtaliyakum, so that He can test you. Summa sarafakum anhum liyabtaliyakum. Walakad afa ankum wa and lakad indeed afa ankum. Uh, afa an is actually one word which means God forgave you. Kum uh, or forgive, uh, forgive of course is like saying afar an and kum is you. So walakad afar an kum would mean and God forgave you. Wallahu zu fadlin alal mu'minin wa and Allah God zu fadlin uh, very very gracious. Allah on al mu'minin the believers. So summa sarafakum anhum would mean that God turned you away from them from them to test you. And walakad afa ankum, and he is, uh, he is someone who forgave you. Walakad afa ankum, even after your blunder of leaving that place, God forgave you. Wallahu zu fadlin alal mu'minin, and God is very gracious upon the believers. Allah is on or upon al mu'minin, the believers. Is tus iduna wala talvuna ala ahadim wa rasulu yadrukum fi ukhrakum. Is when tusiduna. So tusiduna means that you were running away. Wa and la not talvuna. So talvuna, talvuna means to, to not look behind, to not look uh, back. So that is added and that is incorporated by the by the negative particle la. Otherwise, it means to look back. So wala talvun would mean that you did not look back. Allah ahadin any of you. Uh, you did not even. Uh, you were you were running away and you were not even uh, looking back at anyone behind you. Wa and ar Rasul, the messenger, of course, referring to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yadrukum, he call, he was calling you, he was calling you. Yadru call kum you fi in ukhrakum from behind you. So remember when you were running, you were fleeing, and you were not even turning back on anyone, you're not looking back towards anyone. And the fact is, وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ The messenger was calling you, of course calling you to come back. فِي أُخْرَاكُمْ From behind you. So he was stationed behind you and he was calling you to come back. But فَأَصَابَكُمْ Then فَأَصَابَكُمْ would mean that God inflicted upon you. God inflicted upon you. غَمَّن So غَمَّن means a sorrow. Bighammin, which came with another sorrow. So God inflicted you with a sorrow which came with another sorrow. It's like saying that you were doubly inflicted by sorrow. The first sorrow, of course, being the sorrow of defeat that you were facing. And the other sorrow, which we know from this construction, is that it must relate to the person of the Prophet because of the word fa. And this is corroborated by history uh, because we know that during this battle and during this time, when Muslims were fleeing and they had left their post, there was this uh, famous rumor which, uh, which actually spread through them that the Prophet had been martyred. And this, of course, was something so gigantic and so huge in nature that uh, Muslims were really uh, shaken to the core. So the Quran says, لِكَيْ لَا تَحْزَنُوا عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ So God inflicted you with one sorrow after another sorrow. لِكَيْ لَا So that not. Likai is so that la is not. Tahzanu, you grieve so that you do not grieve. Allah on ma fatakum, what has left you? 
و اینڈ لا ناٹ ما اصاب کم واٹ ہیز بی فالن یو واٹ ہیز ریچڈ یو سو دا امپلائڈ میننگ از دیٹ وین یو لیفٹ یور پوس پوس اینڈ دا میسنجر واز کالنگ یو فرام بیہائنڈ بٹ یو ڈڈ ناٹ لسن ٹو ہیم آف کورس اینڈ ہی ایز اے ریزلٹ ون گاڈ ایز اے ریزلٹ انفلیکٹیڈ ون سورو آفٹر دی ادر سو دیٹ یو ڈو ناٹ گریو آن واٹ یو لوز اینڈ ولاما اصاب کم اینڈ واٹ کمس اپون یو وچ آف کورس ریفرس ٹو دا فیکٹ دیٹ دس ٹرائل تھرو وچ دے آر بینگ میڈ ٹو پاس یو آر یو شوڈ انڈرسٹینڈ دیٹ از سم تھنگ ہیز ٹو ہیپن اٹ از گوئنگ ٹو ہیپن اینڈ یو مسٹ ناٹ گریو آن دیٹ ہیپننگ بیکاز دس از گاڈس ڈیسٹنی فار یو اینڈ دیٹ ڈیسٹنی آف کورس از سم تھنگ دیٹ یو ہیو کالڈ فار یور سیلوس بائی بینگ سو کاورڈس سچ سچ کاورڈس ولاما اصاب کم واللہ خبیر بما تعملون و اینڈ اللہ گاڈ خبیر نوز بما واٹ تعملون یو ڈو واللہ خبیر بما تعملون اینڈ گاڈ نوز واٹ یو ڈو سو آف کورس دس از سم تھنگ وچ ونس اگین پیپل آر ریمائنڈیڈ دیٹ وین یو یو ڈڈ ناٹ فالو دا ڈیکورم دا وار دا پروٹوکالز آف دا وار یو آر انفلکٹیڈ بٹ دس لاس اینڈ دس لاس واز سم تھنگ دیٹ واز ڈیسٹن ٹو یو اینڈ اٹ کیم ٹو یو بیکاز گاڈ Uh, you, you should not worry about what has left you or what has uh, reached you because uh, if you do so, then you will not be accepting the destiny from God or the, the fate that is ordained for you. Uh, when something goes amiss like this, then you have to search for the causes and not grieve uh, instead or not be inflicted with grief. And Wallahu khabirun bima ta'amaloon and God very well knows what you do. So we move on to the next uh, verses. Summa anzala alaykum min ba'dil ghammi amanatan nu'asan yakhsha ta'ifatam minkum. Summa, after, after that, or then, anzala, uh, God sent upon alaykum you. God sent upon you. Min ba'dil ghammi, min ba'd after. Al gham, the sorrow. Amana, amana means peace. Nu'as. And of course, this is like a substitute for the word peace, meaning sleep. So after that, God sent down upon you, I mean, after the sorrow that was inflicted upon you, God sent down peace in the form of sleep. Yaksha ta'ifatam minkum. Yaksha means something that enveloped. Ta'ifa, ta'ifa means a group. Minkum, from among you. So after this defeat, God sent down peace in the form of sleep. which enveloped or engulfed a group from among you. Wa ta'ifa and another group, qad, indeed, ahammat hum, they started to engage in thoughts, anfusuhum, they themselves. Yazunnuna, yazunnuna means they, they, actually, uh, they actually engaged in these thoughts. Or qad ahammat hum, anfusuhum, yazunnun would mean that they themselves started to engage in these thoughts billah regarding god and what were the thoughts ghair al haq which were against the truth and zann al jahiliya and they were of the nature of the thoughts that often one would think in the times of jahiliya one thing that i would like to clear here clear uh, clear from our minds here is that often we translate the word jahiliya as jahala or the age of ignorance This is a very uh, incorrect translation. So there is a difference between Jahala and Jahiliya. And uh, if you look at the English translation of the, of the Quran, often wherever the word Jahiliya comes in the Quran, it is translated as the, the age of ignorance. Of course, implying to the age right before the Prophet. So Jahala and Jahiliya are very different words. Uh, the word Jahala can be termed, uh, uh, can be translated as ignorance but not jahiliya so jahiliya is a term used for the pre islamic or the pre prophetic times the pre uh, times before prophet muhammad and it signifies the fact that people would decide the truth of something not because something is truth per se but because it was in line with their own interests this is what ja- classical jahiliya is that you are more concerned with your interest And you're not concerned with what right and wrong is, but your concern is something which suits you. And for that, you will go to any extent. So this is what the term jahiliya actually means. So when it is used here, uh, do remember that uh, any translation that you might come across which says uh, the age of ignorance, this is not true. It is basically an age 
in which people decided right and wrong not on the basis of their conscience or what right and wrong actually are, but on the basis of their own convenience and they thought that, well, if something suits me, it is good for me and it is right for me. So that is what the age of Jahiliya was all about. So these people, so the Quran actually said that one group of people were overcome with sleep and uh, this descended in the form of uh, sleep, the, the, the peace that was given to them descended in the form of sleep and another group, they indulged in this in these wild thoughts of the nature of those, those thoughts which often people would indulge in in the age of Jahiliya and they, they were against the truth, غير الحق. And what were these thoughts? Uh, they are stated right after that. And that is Yaqulun. They would say, Hal lana min al amre min shay? Hal do lana for us min al amre about the matter min shay? Any authority? Which means that do we have any say in these matters? Do we have any? Uh, I mean, do we have any control of these matters? Kul in al amra kul lahu lillah. Kul. Now the Prophet is being told to answer them. Kul is Tell them, O Prophet, and what should we tell them? In al amra kullahu lillah. Inna indeed al amr, the matter kullahu, all of it, lillah is for God. So the matter is all for God. Remember, these were the people who were actually advising the Prophet to fight the war, to fight the battle of uh, Uhud, while staying and stationed in Medina. They did not want themselves to go out. So they were actually saying this: that well, we we did not have any say in, in this battle, and had we I mean, had the Prophet listened to us, uh, maybe this would not have happened. So, Yahuluna Hallana min al Amri min Shay, do we have? They would say that, do we have any say in this matter? So, they are stopped forthwith in the form of a parenthetical sentence, and the Prophet is told that you must answer them in al Amra kullahu lillah, that all authority and all this control belongs to God. Yukhfuna fi anfusihim ma la yubduna lak yukhfuna, they, they hide fi in anfusihim in their souls, in themselves, ma that, la not, yubduna is evident, luck to you. So they hide in themselves what is not evident to you, which means of course that uh, they were having this thought that had these people uh, obeyed us and did not go out of the city to fight the war, this would not have happened. So yakuluna law kana lana min al amri shay'un ma qutilna ha huna. Now you see their inner self has become absolutely apparent. Yaquluna, they say, Law, if, kana lana min al amr, if we had any say, if we had any authority, lana min al amr, if we had any authority, uh, and shayun is of course any, ma qutilna, ma is not, qutilna, we would have been killed, hahuna, right here. So of course they are referring to their, their compatriots who were killed. He said that had they listened to us, had we any say in this matter, we would not have been killed here. Kul. Now, once again, the Almighty is asking the Prophet to answer them. So, you see, this is a beautiful place in the Quran in which you can see how the dialogue, which is, of course, what the Quran is very specific and special about, it's like a conversation that goes on between various uh, groups that are present right there, and it's like a back and forth thing. And many a time you uh, find that uh, the disbelievers are saying something and before any comment is to be made or something is to be answered, the Prophet is told to answer that particular thing that has been said on the spot so that the discourse is stopped there for some time, uh, an answer is given and then the, it proceeds forward. So it, this has occurred twice here. You can see, Kul in al amra kullahu lillah, it was here. So the Prophet was told that you immediately answer them when they say, when they said that, do we have any say? So he was asked to tell them, in al amra kullahu lillah, all the matter belongs to God. Now, once again, when they said, law kana lana min al amri shay, had we any say in this matter, we would not have been killed here. So, once again, the Prophet is told to answer them and that is, law kuntum fi buyutikum, law if kuntum you were fi in buyutikum, your houses. So, buyut is the plural of bayt and bayt means house. So, buyut is houses. So, tell them, O Prophet, had you been in your houses, had you been in your houses, la baraza lazina kutiba alayhimul katlu ila mazajirihim. La baraza indeed appeared. Al lazina, those who kutiba alayhim ordained for them. Kutiba alayhim ordained for them. Al katl, death or killing. Ila, towards. Mazajirihim, their places of death. 
So Mazajir basically is the plural of Mazja and Mazja is, is a place and of course the context here shows the place where a person is to be killed. So what is being said here is that it is not that you were killed because of the planning of the Prophet and he uh, decided that you should go out of the city to fight the enemy. It's not like that. Uh, I mean, when death is destined, God says that had you been in your houses and death had been destined for you, you would have gone there in any case because death was written for you in that situation in this, in this form. And you would have gone there and presented yourselves for this purpose. So what is being said here is that it is not any misplanning from God's prophet that has resulted in this basically. It was the destiny that you had to face because of your own cowardice and because of your own weakness. And then it says, اللَّهُمَا فِي صُدُورِكُمْ وَا And لِيَبْتَلِيَا means to, لِيَبْتَلِيَا means to, to try. Allah, God. And so that God can try مَا فِي صُدُورِكُمْ مَا that fi in صُدُورِكُمْ your hearts. So the word yabtaliya actually just as it means to try, it also means to test and, uh, and to be put to test. So, so that God tests what is in your hearts. Wa and liyumahisa. So yumahisa means to clean something, to purify something. Ma that fi in kulubikum, your hearts. Kulu once again is the plural of kalb. Sudur is the plural of sadr. Sadr means chest. Its plural is sudur. Kalb means heart, its plural is kulub. So God says that so that God tests what is in your hearts and he cleanses what is in, uh, so that God cleanses, uh, tests what is in your chests and he cleanses what is in your hearts. Wallahu alimun bizatis sudur wa and Allah God alimun has knowledge. Bizat, uh, bizat is sudur actually means what is in the hearts. So God has knowledge of what is in the hearts or what is in the chest, it can be said. So, of course, what is in the chest refers to the hearts. So, in other words, what is being said here is that this whole uh, thing happened, this incident happened because God wanted to test and try you. And the ibtala here actually refers to the fact that what we call in Arabic as tathir, to separate the right from wrong. So, we know that this battle of Ohod was one such battle in which the hypocrites and those weak of faith, they became very distinct from the true believers because they absolutely came to the fore. So that is what is being pointed out here. So this happened because God wanted to make you separate and isolate you and because he wanted to test you what is concealed in your heart. So basically this is something that has to be understood that these happenings and these incidents when they occur in this form, uh, Muslims uh, suffer defeat or any reversal, then it is because of their own doing. And at the same time, the law of God is same for everyone. He does not change his law. But we also know from the Quran that this is also a period in which uh, Muslims were uh, given a chance and a respite to respond to their weaknesses and to once again uh, earn God's blessings if they are able to confess their weaknesses and then, of course, reform themselves. Inna lazina tawallaw minkum yawmal taqal jama'an Inna mastazallahum ash-shaytanu bi ma kasabu Inna indeed, Allazina, those who tawallaw turn back minkum from among you, yawma the day, iltaqal jama'an. Iltaqa means to meet face to face. Uh, jama'an. So, uh, jama'an means the two groups. Jama'an is one group. Uh, jama'an would mean two groups, of course, referring to the two opposite uh, parties of the battle. So, inna Allazina, tawallaw minkum yawma taqal uh, jama'an would mean indeed those who turn their backs on the day the two groups met. Inna mastazallahum shaitan Innama indeed. Istazallahum shaitan God, uh, Satan made them slip. Slate, Satan made them slip. Bibaadi ma kasabu Because of something that they did. Bibaaz because, uh, because of something. Ma kasabu Actually literally it means what they earned. And this is a very common way in the Quran to express the fact that the misdeeds that they committed. So if they turned their back, uh, then it was because uh, some of the misdeeds they had committed, Satan induced them to cowardice. In the Mastazallahu Mashaitanu Bimardi Ma Kasabu, he induced them, he led them, he made them uh, lose their ground. Istazallah means that he made them 
lose their ground, he induced them to cowardice. بِبَعْدِ مَا كَسَبُوا Because of their misdeeds. وَلَقَدْ عَفَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَاَنْ لَقَدْ indeed أَفَلْ أَفَا Forgive. Allah, God, anhum, them. But still God forgive them. Yani in spite of all these blemishes, God continue to forgive them. وَلَقَدْ عَفَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ And God forgave them. إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ إِنَّا indeed Allah is God. غَفُور is forgiving. And Halim is, is gracious. And forbearing. So, in Allah Ghafurun Halim, indeed God is forgiving and is forbearing. Ya Yuhal Lazina Amanu, La Takunu Kal Lazina, Kafaru, Wakalu, Lihwani Himul Lazina, Lihwani Him is a Zorabu fil or Aukanu Guzan, Lokanu Indana, Mamatu, Vama Kotilu, Lieger Allah Huzalik, a Hasratan fi Kulubihim, Wallahu Yuhi, where you meet, Wallahu Bima Tarmaluna Basir. The same. Uh, Context is uh, continuing here and the same comment is also continuing in the same way in that uh, believers were being told uh, repeatedly and this they were bombarded with these uh, doubts uh, so that they could be led away from the, their prophet and they are being told that if they had listened to these hypocrites and to these people weak of faith they would not have suffered the way they did suffer. So this is uh, in the background of uh, what is being said that Ya yuhal lazina amanu, O you who believe, la takunu, do not become. Ka lazina like those. Ka is like a lazina those. O believers, do not become like those kafaru who disbelieved. Be not, do not become like those who disbelieved. Waqalu and they said, li ikhwanihim to their brothers. So ikhwan uh, means brothers. Him, their brothers, who said to their brothers, Iza, when? Zarabu fil ard. So, Zarabu fil ard is, a, is an idiom of the Arabic language, means to walk on the earth. It can also mean, I mean, in the context that you, you're, when you go for a journey, when you travel. So, it says, Iza, Zarabu fil ard. Uh, when they said to their brothers. And what did they say? Uh, I mean, at the time that they were going out for traveling, aw kanu ghuzzan, aw means or, kanu ghuzzan, kanu ghuzzan would mean when they had gone for a battle, ghuzza, gone for a battle, kanu, they had gone for a battle, law kanu, law if, kanu, they, indana, were with us, if they were with us, ma, matu, ma, not, matu, died, wa, and, ma, not, kotilu, slain. So they said that had they been with us, they would not have died or had been slain. Again, the same thing that has been said earlier on. Now, this is what the believers are being told. That do not become like these disbelievers who say to their brothers, that who, go, who when they go out for traveling or on a journey or they go out for battle, that had they been with us, they would not have been died or they would not have been slain. Now, لِيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ حَسْرَةً فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ so that God makes this a hasra, so that God makes it a longing. Yaj'ala means to make. Allah is God. Zalika is this thought. Hasra is a longing. Fi in qulubihim, their hearts. So the result is that God will cause them to regret their words. It will become a hasra. It will become a longing in their hearts. Wa and Allah, God, yuhyi gives life. Wa and yumit gives death. And God gives life and God gives death. So what is being said here is that life and death is not in your control. This is not true that if Muslims had stayed back, they would have not suffered, they would not have been killed, they would not have been slain like this. Uh, what is being said here is that life and death, Wallahu yuhyi wa yumit, it is God who gives life, wa yumit, and it is God who gives death. It's not in your control. It's not that if you were placed strategically in a different position or a different place, you would have won the day. That is not the case. Uh, it is God who destines life and death. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basir wa and Allah God bima that which ta'amaluna you do basir uh, sees. So what you do, God sees. God observes. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna basir would mean that whatever you do, God observes that. Wa and la in. So if qutiltum you are slain. Fi in Sabilillah, the cause of God, in the way of God. So if you are slain or if you are killed in the cause of God, aw, or Muttum, you die. 
لا مغفرتن انڈیڈ دا مغفرہ انڈیڈ دا فگیونس من اللہ فرام گاڈ وا اینڈ رحما مرسی خیر ان بیٹر مما واٹ دے یجما ان آر گیدرنگ سو واٹ از بینگ سیڈ ہیئر از دیٹ اف یو آر کلڈ ان ہز کاز اور یو ڈائی ان ہز کاز دی مغفرہ دا فگیونس دیٹ یو ارن فرام ہم اینڈ دا رحما دیٹ یو ارن فرام ہم وچ از مرسی is better than what you are gathering, is better than what you are amassing. وَلَا إِمْ مُتْتُمْ أَوْ قُتِلْتُمْ لَا إِلَى اللَّهِ تُحْشَرُونَ وَا and لَا إِنْ إِفْ مُتْتُمْ you are, you, you die أو or قُتِلْتُمْ you are killed لَا indeed إِلَى اللَّهِ towards, uh, towards God تُحْشَرُونَ you shall be gathered. So whether you die or whether you are killed The result is the same, that you are going to be gathered towards God. You're not going to go towards your own deities. It's not that your deities are going to come and uh, intercede for you. You are going to be in the presence of God. Fabima rahmatim mina. This is one of the most uh, astonishing places of the Quran, one of the most uh, impactful places, and it shows the character of the Prophet. Uh, one thing that you might uh, note here is that you see the, the person of the Prophet is discussed at a number of occasions in the Quran and these occasions of course relate to battles like the Battle of Badr, Ohod, Tabuk, Hunain, all of these are discussed in the Quran, uh, the way he dealt with his companions, the way he concluded the, the truce of Hudaybiyah. So all these, uh, all these verses I would say they present a very, very uh, I would say conceptually true picture of the Prophet and many a time this is not given so much importance and we find the personality of the Prophet in his biography when it is written outside of the Quran. Uh, I mean it hinges on so many weak stories and folklore and things that are not authentic uh, that it gives us really, a, I, at least I feel the, the very painful to see that how it, the person of the Prophet, the way, the grand way and the magnificent and uh, majestic way he's described, uh, his persona, persona is described in the Quran uh, is, I mean, uh, not paid much heed to and we look at a lot of other weak narratives. But if you look through the Quran, you'll find the best biography of the Prophet. Uh, it is interspersed in the Quran. And there have been efforts uh, by various scholars to construct the biography of the, of the Prophet from the Quran. So his bravery, his affection, Uh, his, uh, his dealings towards his companions, all of them, they are spread here and there in the Quran and it would have been much, much uh, beneficial for not only ourselves but for our younger generations to br- bring out his personality in this fashion and the form of uh, what the Quran has said. So this is one area that you might uh, find very interesting. It says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ فَا therefore, بِمَا because رَحْمَةٍ uh, mercy من اللہ فرام گاڈ لنتا لہم یو آر لینینٹ ٹو دیم یو آر جینٹل ٹو دیم سو فبیما رحمت من اللہ مینس بیکاز آف گاڈس مرسی یو آر لینینٹ ٹو دیم بیکاز آف گاڈس فیور بیکاز آف گاڈس گفٹ آن یو یو آر یو آر ویری لینینٹ یو آر ویری جینٹل اینڈ پولائٹ ٹو دیم و اینڈ لو اف کنتا یو ور فزن سو فزن مینس to be bad tempered غلیز القلب غلیز القلب means someone who is hard hearted لن فدو indeed they would have run away من حولك from around you so it is said that it is God's great uh, graciousness that you are a person who is very polite who is very gentle to them had you been someone who was very bad tempered and very hard hearted لو كنت فزن Had you been someone who is very ill-tempered or bad-tempered and hard-hearted, لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ These people who are your sahaba, who are your companions, they would have just run away from around you. So therefore, فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ So therefore, forgive them. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ Ask for forgiveness for them. وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And keep consulting them in the matters of the state. شَاوِرْهُمْ consulting them, fil amr in the matters of the state. So you see, once again, uh, after the battle of Uhud, it, this was a very high chance that the Prophet, uh, in spite of being his, uh, his, his true self, in which, in which he was very gentle, he could have uh, really 
ticked off the Muslims who had left their place and the whole matter resulted in defeat for Muslims. But on top of that, the Almighty says that even now amongst them, there are people who might mend their ways. Even now among there are people who might, if you give them respite, if you give them the more time, they might uh, come to the truth and they become true believers. So, farfu anhum, forgive them. This forgiveness is something you are already prone to. I mean, it's like the Almighty is saying, is saying that you, all, you are already a polite person, you are so gentle. But after this defeat of Ohud, when you might be a little put off because of their behavior, in spite of that, forgive them. Farfu anhum. And not only that, fastaghfir lahum. Ask for their forgiveness. Ask for God's forgiveness for them. And mashawir hum fil amr. And don't, I mean, don't isolate yourselves from them. Don't ignore them. You still consult them in the affairs of state. And then, fa iza azamta, fa Allah. Fa, therefore, iza when azamta, you are determined and you, you come to a conclusion. Fa tawakkal. So, fa, therefore, tawakkal, trust. Allah upon God. So, fa iza azamta, fa tawakkal Allah. But when you reach a decision, then you put your trust in God, which means that you keep consulting these elements, uh, you keep asking for their advice, uh, that is fine, but you are not bound by their advice. It is not that if you give you some advice, then you have to follow what they have said. So don't think that if they, give, if they start dictating you, uh, then this is something that you should accept. Their dictation is not acceptable to you. You should consult them. You should, of course, uh, uh, be advised from them. But then what you best think is... Uh, something that you must follow. Faiza azamta, Allah. Whenever you reach a decision, you do what you would like, and you place your trust in God. Fatawakkal Allah. Why in the Allah you hibbul mutawakkilin? Inna is indeed Allah is God. You hibbu is hold dear. Mutawakkilin, those who trust. Indeed, God holds dear those who trust. In if yan surukum Allah, if God helps you, yan suru. Helps kum you Allah God. If God helps you, fala ghaliba lakum. No one can prevail upon you. Fa, therefore, la not ghalib prevail lakum to you. So if God helps you, none can prevail upon you. Wa and in if yakhzul kum. If God abandons you, fa therefore man who zallazi is yansurukum going to help you. Mim ba'dihi after this. So if God is with you, no one can prevail upon you. But if God leaves you, then who is it who is going to help you? So therefore, wa ala Allah fal yatawakkal lil mu'minun wa an Allah upon Allah God fal yatawakkal should trust al mu'minun the, the believers. So upon God should the believers trust. Wa ma kana li nabiyyin an yaghul. فَمَنْ يَغْلُ الْيَأْتِ بِمَا غَلَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ سُمَّ تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُزْلَمُونَ So the same topic is still continuing and you see uh, the propaganda that they were uh, also stirring in the minds of the Muslims and weak Muslims in particular was that they would say that their own prophet was someone who was not their well-wisher because had he stayed back in Medina and fought the war, the Battle of Ohud, from Medina, there would have been very few casualties and Muslims might have won the day. But they, uh, they, 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 they stirred this propaganda that look at the misplanning on the part of the Prophet that he went out of the city and this caused so much uh, killings amongst the Muslims. So therefore, such a Prophet cannot be your well-wisher. So this is the background. So on, upon this, the Quran is now commenting. So remember, the Quran is like a is like a code, is like a living relationship which the Prophet had with God and it resulted in revelations which were a response to a situation, which were a response to a number of comments which were not actually cited directly in the Quran, but you can read in between the lines. If you read these verses, it means that it is not the uh, stature of the Prophet to be someone who is a ill-wisher of people. Now, of course, that ill wish is not sounded or not uh, sort of presented in words, but we very well know from the context that, the, uh, that these hypocrites were trying to raise this propaganda that their own prophet was not their own well-wisher because he, has, he was responsible for this 
uh, bloodshed. So now the Quran is commenting on this which is in the air. I mean, this, these feelings were in the air. So remember, you, when you understand the Quran, and we uh, discussed this a number of times, that's it's basically a conversation, it's a dialogue between real entities of 7th century Arabia. What is being transpired in the atmosphere is discussed. What is uh, discussed is also something which is uh, in between the lines and also at times very, very apparent. So if you keep all these aspects in mind, you will be really able to appreciate. Now, this is a comment, as I said, of the Quran on something that was in the atmosphere. So that thing can be gauged from the context. And that thing was that these uh, people were trying to stir this propaganda that their prophet was an ill-wisher. He was not your well-wisher because he took you out of the city. So now the Quran is commenting on that without citing them. It's commenting. It says, Which means that it is not befitting for a prophet to be some so someone's ill-wisher or someone who is not a well-wisher. And man, he who yaglul is an ill-wisher. Yati bima ghalla. He comes forth with what he has ill-wished. Yawm al on the day of judgment. So what is being said is that no prophet of God is of this sort that he would be an ill-wisher. He would not will, uh, wish well for his people. And... Anyone who does that, he's going to come on the day of judgment and that ill wish that he harbored in his heart is going to be exposed on that day. And he who does that ill wishing, he is going to come on the day of judgment with that ill wish, which means that is going to be exposed. It will be brought before people. Summa, then, Tuwaffa kullu. Tuwaffa means given in full. Kullu nafsin, every soul. Ma, that. Kasabat. It earned. So every soul will be given in full what it earned. Which means that on the day of judgment, everyone will be recompensed in full whatever it earned. Kasabat earned. Wa and whom they la not yuzlamun be in any way shown injustice. So they, should, they will not be shown any injustice. A uh, if manittaba. Uh, he who ittaba means uh, he who f follows or he would like Rizwan Allah. So Rizwan means uh, the pleasure Allah is God. So he who would like to please God of a manittaba Rizwan Allah. So therefore he would who would like to ittaba Rizwan Allah who would like to uh, please God who would like to make God happy. Ka equal man he ba a return be with sakhat sakhat means anger. Min Allah from God, wa and ma wahu his abode, his fate, Jahannam, his hell. So what is being said is is a comparison. So he who follows the will of God or he who seeks to make God happy, can he be the same? Can he be the same? Kaman, who returns with God's anger, the the two cannot be the same. Of course, that is what being what is being implied here. That there is one group. Who would like to please God, and there is another group who has returned with the wrath of God. Their fate is hell. Wa and bi'sa evil al masir resting place. And what an evil resting place is that, which of course this is referring to hell, Jahannam, hell. Hum they darajat lots of ranks and lots of I mean high status in the law before God. Hum darajatun in the law. And they will have different status. There were lots of status with God. Wa and Allah, God. Basir observes. Bimat yamalun what they are doing. And God observes what they are doing. And without having any recourse to the uh, linguistics of the Arabic language, just to, see, to keep something that might help you in translating the Quran, whenever you see yamalun, it means they know. And whenever you see ta'lamun, it means you know. So ya and ta. It's just like a change in inflection. So, Wallahu basirun bima ya'malun would mean that God knows what they are doing. But if, if it had been ta'maloon, it would mean God knows what you are doing. So, like it's like the second and the third uh, person that is being mentioned here. So, ya'lamun means what they are doing. And ta'lamun means what you are doing. Lakad mannallahu ala al mu'mineen. La, lakad indeed. Mannallah. Uh, God's favor or God showed favor. Indeed, 
God showed favor alal mu'minin upon the believers so literally it would mean and indeed showed favor God upon the believers so what we can do idiomatically is and indeed God was uh, God showed favor upon the believers is ba'asa when ba'asa he sent fi him among them and uh, rasulan a messenger min anfusihim from among themselves he did not belong to anyone outside of them from among themselves yatlu alayhim he would recite upon them ayatihi his revelations wa and in this manner yuzakkihim he would purify them and yu'allihumuhum and he would teach them al kitab the sharia wa and al hikma al hikma of course refers to the philosophy and wisdom of religion so basically what is being said here is that the almighty uh, it should you should be uh, very grateful to god because he showed his favor to them and how did he show that favor to them he sent to them a messenger who belonged to their own selves who was from their own nation and what did he do he would recite upon them god's ayat god's revelations wa yuzakki him and he would purify them and how would he purify them this is then mentioned by teaching them the book and the wisdom by teaching them the book the book of course uh, is referring to the law here which is the sharia and al hikma is the wisdom or the philosophy of religion wa and in if uh, or we can say though kanu they were min qabl before this la in uh, or the, uh, la is like like a uh, em- emphatic uh, particle which means it actually emphasizes fi uh, necessarily in zalal deviance mubin clear so and, and indeed before this they were in clear misguidance they were clearly misguided this is referring to the arabs of the times of prophet muhammad we know that these arabs were the descendants of the prophet ishmael so after prophet abraham we know uh, the the whole responsibility of shahada was passed on to the israelites through his son isaac and all the way up to jesus it remained with them for about 2000 years and uh, then of course it was after him that uh, prophet muhammad was given uh, the position and uh, this happened many many centuries like two and a half centuries after prophet abraham so amongst the arabs after prophet ishmael there was no prophet that had come it was only prophet muhammad who came uh, two and a half centuries later and in between we know it was the it was the israelites who were given this responsibility so that is what is being said here that god showed his favor to them to these arabs when he sent from among them not from someone outside of them from among them a messenger who instructed them in law who instructed them in the philosophy of religion who purified them and before his arrival they were in deep error so this is what is being told awalamma asabatkum musibatun kad asabtum mislaiha qultum anna hadha qul huwa min indi anfusikum inna allah ala kulli shay'in qadir awalamma asabatkum and and yes asabatkum musibatun asabatkum has reached you musibatun a calamity qad indeed asabtum had reached mislaiha twice of its kind so it is it is said that if a musibat has reached you if a calamity has reached you then a twice that calamity had reached kad asabtum mislaiha then i mean you can say that when, when a calamity had had reached you after you yourselves had been inflicted or had inflicted them with twice the same losses and this i mean you kad asabtum mislaiha when you were in a position and you uh, inflicted losses upon them which were twice so misl is like the same but mislay means twice so what you have now been inflicted with earlier on you inflicted twice that calamity upon them of course referring to the battle of badr kultum anna haza uh, and uh, did you also say kultum anna haza qul huwa min an, in the anfusikum so when this calamity reached you the in, in the battle of uh, uhud you said 
where has this come from? Kultum, you said, Anna Haza, where has this come from? Kul. So now the Prophet is being told, you tell them, Huwa min indi anfusikum. Huwa, this, min indi from anfusikum, yourselves. Which means that you yourselves are to blame. It is from yourself that this calamity has struck you. In Allah ala kulli shayin kadir. Inna indeed Allah is God. Ala on kulli every shay thing. Kadir, powerful. Indeed, God is God has power over everything. Wa and ma asabakum. What reached you? Ma asabakum. What reached you? Yoma the day. Iltaka. Iltaka means met. Al jamaan. The two armies. Wa fa. Therefore. Be iznillah with the permission of God. Wa and liya'lam al mu'minin. God knows the believers. So, wa ma asabakum yom al taqal jamaan would mean that what befell you on the day the two armies met was with God's directive, with God's permission. And so that He is able to know the uh, the the believers. Of course, the word know here means to make distinct, to make them. Separate to isolate them. The, the, the thing that we already uh, studied earlier was liyabtaliya, which means that God tries and tests people so that the situation is such that good people and bad people they are made distinct because of the trial. They come to the fore; they are highlighted. So waliyalam al mu'minin, so that God is able to distinguish the mu'minin. They stand out from the hypocrites and the weak of faith. وَلِيَعْلَمْ الَّذِينَ نَافَقُوا وَا and لِيَعْلَمَ so that he knows الَّذِينَ those who نَافَقُوا who committed hypocrisy. So, whatever this defeat that came to you, uh, actually وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْتَقَلْ جَمَعَانِ is referring to that defeat. It has not been stated in words. The words are that what befell you, what with that which you were inflicted with. If that happened, it was so that God could make distinct the believers and so that he could also make distinct the hypocrites. لِيَعْلَمَ الَّذِينَ نَافَقُوا وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْ قَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَأَوِدْفَعُوا And those who had وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ would mean and when they were said and when, when it was said to them تَعَالَوْ Come قَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Fight for the cause of God. قَاتِلُوا Fight فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ For the cause of God. أو, uh, or إِدْفَعُوا means to defend. So, uh, when you read it, uh, I mean, uh, by uniting the two words, it would be avidfaru. But otherwise, it's awidfaru. So, وَلِيَعْلَمَ الَّذِينَ نَافَقُوا and وَقِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْ قَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And when they were told and when they were asked that come on and have and fight for the cause of God or at least defend your city. قَالُوا They replied, لَوْ if Narlamu, we knew Qitalan that the battle is going to take place. Lattabanakum, we would have followed you. So you see, these people who had stayed behind in the battle of Uhud, the another excuse that they built up was first they said that uh, the Prophet must stay in the city and fight, and then they said, Well, even if you go out, that battle is not going to take place. And then uh, when they were asked, they told, well, if we were fully convinced that the battle is going to take place, we would have followed you. So that is what is being said here. It is being said that, Had we known that the battle is going to take place, uh, we would have definitely, we would have definitely followed you. We would have come behind you. Now the Quran is commenting on this, on this attitude. It is saying, Hum lil kufri yawmaizin akrabu minhum lil iman. Hum they lil kufr about disbelief, Yawma is in that day, Akrabu, near, Minhum, than they, Lil Iman, with uh, regarding faith. So, on that day, they were closer to disbelief than faith. In other words, this is just a literal translation. What is being said here is that on that day, disbelief was something that had overcome them instead of belief. When they said this, that had war looked imminent, we would have come out of the city and fought with you. Inside of them, they knew that this is just a lame excuse. They knew that the battle is going to take place. So the Quran is actually commenting on this lame excuse that they were actually more closer to disbelief. They were, they were scared to death. They did not want to go out. And this is what made them sit in the city. 
ناؤ یقولون بے افواہ ہم ما لئی صفی قلو بہم یقولون دے سے بے افواہ ہم وت دیر ماؤتس اور دے سے فرام دیر ماؤتس ما نوٹ دیٹ سوری ما از دیٹ لئی سا از نوٹ فی ان قلو بہم دیر ہارٹس دے سے فرام دیر ماؤتس وٹ از نوٹ ان دیر ہارٹس واللہ اعلم بما یکتمون و این اللہ گاڈ اعلم نوز بما یکتمون وٹ دیر ہائیڈنگ سو In their hearts of hearts, they knew uh, if they go out, they would be slain. And they did not want to express this from their mouths. So what they said is that, well, had we known that the battle is going to take place, we would have definitely come behind you, but it's not going to take place. So the Quran says they were clothed with disbelief than belief on that day. And they were hiding in their hearts things that they would not like to reveal. And, but God knew. So, يَقُولُونَ بِأَفْوَائِهِمْ مَا لَيْسَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ What they said from their mouths was not what they had in their hearts. But God knew very well. وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَكْتُمُونَ God knew what they were hiding. يَكْتُمُونَ They were hiding. الَّذِينَ قَالُوا لِيَخْوَانِهِمْ Those who قَالُوا said لِيَخْوَانِهِمْ to their brothers وَقَعَدُوا And who were, who sat down, who did not go out. لَوْ أَطَعُونَ Had they listened to us, لَوْ أَطَعُونَ Had they listened to us, مَا قُتِلُوا They would not have been slain. They would not have been killed. قُلْ Tell them, فَدْرَعُوا فَدْرَعُوا means to, to ask something to go away, to ward off something. أَنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ From yourselves, الْمَوْتْ Death. So once again, this is the same thing that they have repeated, that they told their, the, the people, the ones who were sitting, and they said of their brothers who had gone out, that had they listened to us, لَوْ أَطَعُونَ مَا قُتِلُوا They would not have been killed. Now, the Prophet is once again being told to comment and comment them in, in, in the same way. فَذْرَهُ أَنْ أَنْفُسِكُ الْمَوْتَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you are able to avert death, then do so. If you are really truthful, إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you are really truthful, then try in averting death. And of course, you will not be able to do that. So with this, we come to an end to today's uh, literal and idiomatic translation. If you have any questions now, uh, please raise them. Dr. Salim, I do not see any raised hands, but I have a question. So the mm -hmm. jahiliya that you referred to uh, earlier, uh, is that just those particular people at the time of the Prophet or people who misuse or do not understand or try not to understand but keep their own interests uh, before uh, mm -hmm. seeing if it's a truth or a lie? Can they be also be referred to as jahiliya? I mean, that's just an extension. You can just extrapolate and intuit other people. But you see, this age of Jahiliyyah was something that was uh, put to an end by the Quran. When the Quran and the believers and the Prophet himself, they showed that truth does not lie in your own vested interest. It lies uh, in the fact that you follow your own conscience and the directives of God. It's not that uh, something that suits you uh, should be something that you think is the right thing. So this is a whole concept that was there. So all the tribes of Arabia who fought with others and they fought amongst themselves, it was for this, these vested interests, for their own personal interests. And whenever they would be asked about right and wrong, so whatever right and wrong uh, standards that they had were not any standards that, uh, that would have a common benchmark, which of course is uh, our own conscience or the absolute truth that we know about. It would rather be their own personal vested interest. So this is how the age of Jahiliya was characterized. But anyone who follows this, of course, we can uh, uh, just by analogy say that you're following the age of Jahiliya, but instead of following your conscience and objective standards of truth, you are following your own uh, personal inclinations because they suit you. So, I mean, it's like a common, uh, I mean, you can say that uh, the age of Jahiliya was rampant in, in all of Arabia and the Quran and the Prophet uh, to a major extent put an end to it. So today, anyone who follows suit can, uh, I mean, we just cannot have the same term used for them. But what we can say is that you are following the same people or you're, you're doing it in the same way. Thank you so much, Dr. Saleem. Uh, Akram Bhatti sahab, if you can unmute your mic and ask you a question. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Salaam alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum, sir. Sir, in 154, there are two words I use for heart, sudurikum and waliyakhali yallahu maafi sudurikum, waliyakhali maafi sudurikum. So, what's the fine uh, uh, difference between sudur and kulub? Yeah, sudur or kulub, if you can. 
I mean, one thing, well, the first thing is, It actually means that God may test what is concealed in your chests. I mean, it, to put to test. It's like the first step. And the next thing is, as a result of that, يُمَحِّسَ He is able to cleanse the evil that is found in your hearts. So that is like the second step. First, it's like God putting you to test, making you pass through that test. And the result of that would be that evil in that, uh, in what you conceal in your hearts is able to be sifted out, is able to be cleansed from, from that. So it's like uh, stating the two steps, I would say. So Sadr and, uh, and Kalb, is, are they interchangeable? Are they the same? I mean, Sadr and Kalb are actually referring to the same fact. But... The verbs are different. The first is liyabtaliya and the second is yumahisa. So yabtaliya means yeah. God tests you, makes you go through that test. And the result of that test is that whatever is concealed in your heart, uh, it is brought to the fore. It is brought to the surface and as a result you are cleansed of those evil thoughts. So the second process is cleansing and the first process is uh, to put to test. But in both cases, the word heart or uh, the word uh, chest is referring to the same thing. It's, it actually is referring to the thoughts of the hearts. What is concealed as a, as our thoughts within ourselves. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Nishad Shafkat, please unmute your mic and ask your question. Thank you. Salaam alaikum, Doctor. Doctor, you said about, uh, talked about the uh, kind-heartedness of the Prophet. If I recall correctly, is it uh, correct that uh, at one place even God said, Oh, Prophet, what have you done by forgiving mm. these people and yes. keeping them away mm. uh, correct. Uh, from uh, that day? That's yes. all I just want to... Yes, this is in Surah Tawbah and this is in the Battle of uh, Tabuk when Prophet uh, forgave them for staying back. Uh, I think it is Hunayn or Tabuk, one of the two battles. So these uh, hypocrites, the Almighty wanted to expose them. And the Prophet, out of his uh, politeness and gentleness, when they came to him and said that we don't have any means of transport and you would like to sit back, uh, the Prophet, instead of insisting, he just said, okay. So on such an occasion, the Almighty said, Afallahu anka lima azinta lahum. God forgive you. I mean, God is telling the Prophet that, God forgive you, what have you done? I wanted to expose these people and you have allowed them to stay back. You have spoiled my scheme, so to speak. So... I mean, yes, this is his graciousness and this is something which uh, uh, we can see so rampantly in the, in the Quran. It is being discussed and I do, as I said, I do wish that people are able to write a biography of the Prophet on the basis of the Quran. And yes, there have been efforts made. Uh, people have, uh, uh, have authored a couple of books which are based on uh, his biography entirely from the Quran. But I still do think that uh, this is an effort that should continue and more pearls of wisdom that are hidden in the Quran regarding the Prophet, uh, they can be highlighted. I know, sir, but that would be a little difficult because, uh, for example, a biography would usually include uh, his birth and his right. uh, upbringing and all that, those mm. kind of things. We could uh, possibly highlight the uh, aspects of his personality from mm. uh, different verses yes. of the Quran. Yes, that's what I meant actually. Biography, I was not referring to his uh, like biodata or something. That is something that history uh, is going to tell us. So biography means his, his personality, his conduct, his character, uh, his stature, the way he uh, conducted himself. Uh, so all these things which are really inspirational. Uh, so unfortunately, they have been lost in the, in the maze of so many things. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Siddiqa, if you could please ask your question now. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. This is uh, continuing from Akram Bharti Sahib's uh, question. Uh, mm -hmm. Would it be, because I'm making notes, so I was just wondering if I, I got this right. If we have mm -hmm. Sadr and Kalb and they both kind of mean the heart, we're not talking the um, physical anatomy heart, right? We're talking mm, the abstract idea of heart and mind. Right. So you see, the, uh, when the Quran uses the word heart, it actually uses it to mean the center of the soul. Uh, in other words, you see, we have two planes of existence. We have a material self. We have a material existence. So the center of that material existence is your brain. It, con it controls your material self. When the Quran uses the word heart, it actually refers to your soul or, in, so to speak, the center of your soul. 
which is like the inner cognizance that you can have of things. So it actually reflects to your, uh, uh, I mean, as the words are, ma fi sudurikum, whatever is in your hearts, whatever is in your test chest. So it's not your hearts that are being referred to, it is the content of the hearts. Heart itself is the center of the soul, and the content of your hearts are your thoughts, basically. The way you would think about, the way you would have develop an attitude. So it's referring to those thoughts. So don't confuse it with science because in science you have those thoughts arising in your mind and your brain. So that is not how the Quran has taken uh, a cue from these terms. So the kalb, uh, in the case of the Quran, is, uh, is, a, is, is not just the heart, the piece that we have in our chest. It basically is the center of our soul, something which the soul is concentrate, concentrated upon. I mean, like something of a receiver of the soul. It is like the point from which the soul receives uh, its information. Thank you so much. So, Dr. Salim, I have a question. Would that be instinct also? Would you include instinct in that? No, instinct is a different thing. So, the word instinct is uh, in Arabic is called jibilla. I mean, jibilla means that something that is in your nature. You are, instinct would mean, for example, that we have the instinct of, uh, of sleeping. We have the instinct of getting hungry. We have the instinct of thirst. We have a sexual urge, which is also our instinct. So, instinct are basically... Uh, Human, human needs that uh, develop in the form of uh, habits, I would say also, and routines also. Ji, I was wondering if the questions about uh, these particular ayats for today are done so I can ask a gen general question. Oh, okay. Uh, right now, I do not see any raised hands for um, anything pertaining to what we studied today. So, yeah, you, you may ask your question. Thank you. Dr. Sam, alaikum. Dr. Sam, Mike, uh, I have, I have, I'm very confused about uh, uh, Surah Feel, mm -hmm. and I have a lot of questions about that, and also, okay. also a question about how your commentary about the, the historical event is different from what we have been taught since childhood. So my first question is, uh, did the war actually happen before the Prophet's birth or did it happen after the Prophet's birth and does that have a significance? So, we, I mean, we're told it happened in the year of his birth. That is why it's called the Amul field, the year of the elephant. All right. Okay. So, uh, my next question, Dr. Sab, is uh, uh, that uh, God uh, clearly states that it, it was through his help that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this kind of a result where these people were these attackers, aggressors were like a chewed straw that mm -hmm. they ended up in, in, in this state. So my, my uh, second question is, is there, is there a rule based on which God decides that I am going to uh, you know, participate or lend a hand mm -hmm. in this particular battle, but in this other battle, uh, you know, these people are on their own and what law or rule is that specifically, spe specifically if we consider that this was not a ghazwa, this was not mm -hmm. a battle in which the Prophet mm -hmm. was part of th this battle. Mm -hmm. So why did God decide that he's going to help out these people? Um, right. uh, and, and Okay, let's take it one by... Questions. Okay. Yeah. So you see... Yeah, so remember these were custodians of the Baytullah. Although they had been incriminated with polytheism, they still uh, were people who took God's name and they, of course God was angry with them. But you see the law of God regarding helping people is that is discussed in surah, uh, the surahs of the Quran and that is that unless you play your role, unless you play your part in defending the house of God or anything which is, uh, I mean, ordained for you as a responsibility, God is not going to help you. So this is a, like a general rule that unless you play your role, uh, unless you play your part, he is someone who is not going to come to your help, even if it is something as uh, distinct as his own house. So the Quraysh had to take the lead, they had to do something. And if you look at uh, the, uh, the surah and if you also look at the historical accounts, the, the Quraysh knew that they would not be able to fight Abraha's uh, army. It was a huge army if they would just face him in the open. So they took to this uh, very novel uh, way in which they hid in the mountains around the Kaaba and they started to pelt stones from, uh, uh, from those high places. And the Almighty then uh, stirred a storm and those those stones actually started to be, I mean, they had, they picked up very large velocity. They became 
uh, very speedy and you know when a stone strikes at a very high speed, uh, it can le really be lethal. So that is what happened. So it's not that the, the birds were sent for this purpose. The birds were actually sent uh, or they actually arrived to just consume the people uh, or the meat or their own prey as we could say. And that is how it happened. Uh, otherwise, uh, it does not make sense. So, Tarmihim Bejarati Min Sijil means that you threw those stones uh, made of, uh, of uh, clay and uh, God actually created that storm uh, as a result of which those stones were, and they, they struck them. And re remember the word Rama is used. So, Tarmi means to throw. And linguistically, the birds cannot be ascribed this, uh, this whole process because you see, the birds, are, they drop. They cannot, I mean, they do not use their force like this. So, the word Rama, which is Tarmi, can only be used for a force which is like this, like thrown like horizontally like this or maybe even vertically. But a bird, of course, you know, it cannot bend its, its beaks and its, uh, and its uh, claws in this way. All it can do is just open the beaks or open the claws so that it can drop. So, this word is also absolutely inappropriate. So, uh, Rama would not have been used had the stones been of the nature that they were being dropped by the beaks and the claws of the birds. Some other words to the effect or the, to the meaning of, uh, for example, in the Arabic language, alqa yulqi, alqa is to drop. So, that was the appropriate word. Rama is something that could never have been used by the Quran or cannot be used to, to imply uh, to throw through the arms. So, Rama is always something in which you use your force in a way that you, you draw backwards and then you throw. So, this is something which, is, which the birds could not have done. So, linguistically and uh, as far as the law of God is concerned, on both these counts, Ustaz Hamiduddin Farai says, and he is the first person who pointed this out, and he says that uh, this is uh, something that we have misunderstood. And if you would like to go into more details, I will advise you to look up his tafsir uh, of Surah Feel, if not already. So, it has been summarized by Ustaz Amin Asn Islahi and by Ustaz Ghamidi, but as I said, if you would like to research more, it is better that you go to the original person, and that is Ustaz Hamiduddin Farai. So, Surah Feel, you will find in the Urdu language also, also in the English being translated, and of course, the original is in Arabic. Thank you so much Thank for you. that, Dr. Salim. Uh, Naima Afridi, please ask your question. Assalamu uh, alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum as uh, My question is, sir, uh, going outskirt of city and fight that war mm. was uh, because uh, that was a cumulative uh, decision of companion or shura we can say that's it i mean the prophet consulted his companions and the companions who were true believers they all said that they should take uh, on the enemy heads on and they should be on the offensive instead of being on the defensive and uh, and fight from within the city uh, the other and mind you it does seem from the quran also that the prophet himself wanted to go out so, yes, uh, he was divinely guided in this, in this respect also. But in order to uh, take his uh, believers into confidence, he also consulted them. And his own opinion, we can say, it matched the opinion of the, uh, of the uh, companions who were true believers. And therefore, this is how they, they went out and fought the battle. So, that, that shows her the strength of the Shura, right? How... So, remember one thing that the Prophet himself was, uh, he was not bound by the Shura because the Quran has said, I mean the rest of us or after, people, after him, of course, uh, the system is bound by the Shura. But the Prophet himself being divinely guided, that is why, you see, we just studied this word, it says that you keep consulting them. Shavir hum fil amr faiza azamta fa tawakkarillah. But when you reach a decision, which is your own decision, it could be a different one from what they have given you uh, as, as an advice then you just need to trust God and go ahead with your decision. So, God, Prophet was not bound. Yes, he did consult them. But for example, if uh, he had a different view and others would have a different view, he, would, was, he was to follow his own view because his own view, would, uh, whenever it would be based on Wahi. So, this is also a thing that you might need to know that uh, the, the companions would often argue with the Prophet and discuss some decision with him. And they would often say that uh, whatever you are telling us is this because of Wahi, in that case, we will not argue with you. Or is it on the basis of your own opinion? In which case, we will give you an opinion. So, we know that Habab ibn Munzar, he gave the Prophet uh, an advice. Uh, I mean, he actually asked the Prophet that, have you decided to go and, 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 and place yourself and the army at this particular vantage point? 
the prophet said yes i mean so habab and munzur actually wanted to know whether he was di- being divinely guided to go there uh, the prophet said no it's my own strategy so habab said well if this is your own strategy then let me give you a better idea this is not a very clear place it's like a very vulnerable place instead of settling here we should go some place else and he pointed out that place so i mean that is how the prophet would also engage with his companions many a time he would just uh, listen to them because he thought that they have come up with a better suggestion also but once he was divinely guided and this is actually what happened in the truce of hudaybiyah so when he actually opened the ihram he just took off the ihram uh the people like umar and the, the rest they were very i mean they were taken aback that it's like a defeat that the muslims have suffered so uh, the prophet said that inni mamur i have been asked by god to do it so it was at this juncture that the rest of the sahaba also took off their ihram uh, so sorry it's not question just uh, you know uh, th- thank you for uh, uh, providing more details so it means then wherever uh, there is no direct way from allah so that means uh, right. prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was always consulting always consulting and also and accepting them he, if he thought that they were more logical in their in their view right right and that's a lesson for the the rest of the nation that the, uh, the for yes. for our right. time that shura is a superiority and whatever they decide right or wrong should be followed correct thank you Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Salim. Then there are more, no more questions pertaining to the text today. Can I ask a general question in the chat? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so there's a question that somebody's asked: uh, Is there any probation if relatives of opposite gender gather in same place without need or nece- necessity, but have a fruitful conversation and crack jokes, which are decent, just to keep bounds healthy with without any bad intentions, as seen in our culture? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why not? I mean, if people have a different view, then that should be presented. I mean, the Quran itself has said that whether you uh, the, the Quran is, has says. In fact, this is a very clear message that the Quran gives. It says that these norms of gender interaction, in which you are bound by decency, uh, like for example, you wear a decent dress, uh, you don't allow your eyes to take uh, undue liberty, uh, you have uh, dressed up in a, in a proper way the quran says that he it does not want to limit your social interaction and it says that you can go to each other's houses and taqulu jamian aw ashtata and you can sit together and converse at one place or you can sit separately the quran says it's your choice so i think that uh, this is something which the quran has itself pointed out that as long as you maintain that decency uh, this is something which is it has allowed expressly Thank you so much, Dr. Salim. Uh, Mohammed Kasim, we have we're very short on time, so if you can keep your questions short, we'll take it. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, sir, ये poetry को हम casually पढ़े या गा के पढ़े सुनने में अजीब नहीं लगता है, बल्कि बहुत अच्छा लगता है. लेकिन अगर prose को हम गा के पढ़े या फिर ये सवाल हम आपसे गा के करें तो सुनने में बहुत अजीब लगेगा. मेरा जो doubt है वो दरअसल किल्लत है इल्म की वजह से है कि मुझे अरबी नहीं आती है कुरान जो कि अल्लाह का कलाम है क्या इसको गा के पढ़ने से जैसे अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह रब्बिल आलमीन को अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह रब्बिल आलमीन कुरान को इस तरह के गा इस तरह से गा के पढ़ने से सुनने में अजीब नहीं लगता है क्या आ, कल सर आपने बताया था कि कुरान प्रोज नहीं है बल्कि राइम्ड प्रोज है तो हमको इससे ख्याल है कि शायद इसलिए गा के पढ़ने से अजीब नहीं लगता है जैसे कि पोइट्री को गा के पढ़ने से अजीब नहीं लगता है बट सर आई स्टिल नीड क्लैरिफिकेशन कि एक अरबी जानने वाले के लिए ये चीज कैसी है एंड सर लास्ट पॉइंट कि चूंकि हमको सिर्फ उर्दू और इंग्लिश आती है तो क्या आप हमको कोई उर्दू या इंग्लिश में कुरान के जैसा राइम्ड प्रोस का कोई एग्जाम्पल दे सकते हैं जिससे हम फील कर सके कि ये कुरान किस तरह का कलाम है थैंक यू सर तो पहली बात तो ये है कि देखिए ये जो गा के आप कह रहे हैं ना ये कुरान मजीद को तो नबी सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम भी ऐसे ही पढ़ते थे इसके लिए वर्ड गाना नहीं है बल्कि इसका मतलब इसका मतलब है कि कुरैश के लहजे में तलावत करना तो जब हम ऐसे पढ़ते हैं तो इसको हम तलावत कहते हैं इसका तलावत का मतलब ये है कि कुरान मजीद के जो मखारज हैं उसकी जो प्रोनसिएशन है उसको हम अरब लहजे में पढ़ रहे हैं तो ये नबी सल वसम भी पढ़ते थे सहाबा भी पढ़ते थे और हम सब की कोशिश होती है कि हम उस लहजे में पढ़ें इस वजह से ये तो बिल्कुल कोई इसमें कबाहत नहीं है और इसके लिए गाने के के बजाय जैसे मैंने कहा कि जो वर्ड यूज़ खुद कुरान अपने बारे में करता है वो तिलावत है और आपका जो दूसरा सवाल था मेरे जहन से निकल गया बुढ़ापे 
राइम्ड प्रोस का कोई ऐसा जी तो देखें राइम्ड प्रोस की एग्जांपल आपको अरबी अदब में मिल जाएगी जैसे मकामात एक सिंफ है मकामात हमदानी अगर आपने देखने हो मकामात हरीरी हैं अरबी जबान में ही हैं वो मुकफ़ा और मुसजा हैं नहीं उर्दू अंग्रेज़ी में हाँ आप ये कह सकते हैं कि मोहम्मद हुसैन आज़ाद अगर आपने नाम सुना हो उन्होंने आब हयात जो किताब लिखी या कदीम उर्दू है ये आज से समझ लीजिए डेढ़ सौ दो सौ साल पहले तो उस वक्त भी तरीका था मुकफ़ा और मुसजा उर्दू लिखने का मुकफ़ा और मुसजा का मतलब है ऐसी नसर जिसमें काफ़ी और रदीफ़ होता था तो वो आप देख सकते हैं कदीम ज़माने में लखनऊ की जो उर्दू है या मोहम्मद हुसैन आज़ाद की जो उर्दू है इसी तरह से बहुत सारे राइटर्स उनके ज़माने में तो ये कुछ अरसे के लिए चल पड़, चल पड़ा था लेकिन उसके बाद इसको अबैंडन कर दिया गया और अल्ताफ़ हुसैन हाली और उनके बाद जो लोग आए सर सैद भी उनमें नुमायाँ थे कि उन्होंने नसर को बहुत सादा कर दिया तो सर सैद से जो स्कूल ऑफ थाट शुरू हुआ उर्दू ज़बान का वो था कि जिसके अंदर नसर के अंदर वो जो राइम्ड हिस्सा है वो निकाल दिया गया और सादा तरीके से नसर लिखती गई तो ये आप उर्दू ज़बान की तारीख जब पढ़ेंगे तो आपको ये मिल जाएगा अंग्रेज़ी ज़बान में भी इसी तरह से आपको मिलेगा कि जैसे जेफरी चौसर वगैरह थे या जो कदीम बिल्कुल पुराने लिटरी लोग थे उनके यहाँ भी आपको राइम प्रोज़ मिल जाएगी लेकिन वो इतनी कदीम अंग्रेज़ी है कि वो आज आपको यू नॉट बी एबल टू मेक सेंस ऑफ इट वो बहुत मुख्तलफ है ज़्यादा बेहतर यही है कि अगर आपने कुरान मजीद की को समझना है तो आप कुरान ही को समझिए उसके लिए आपको किसी के पास जाने की ज़रूरत नहीं है अपना उन्स पैदा कीजिए कुरान मजीद से कुरान मजीद को समझ के पढ़ने की कोशिश कीजिए और अगर आप बार बार पढ़ेंगे तो यही वो चीज़ है जो आपके लिए मुफीद साबित होगी ओके अमार रसूल प्लीज अनम्यूट माई कैन आस्क योर क्वेश्चन थैंक यू वेरी मच सर सर वेरी गुडली मेरा फॉलो अप क्वेश्चन ये है सूर्य फील के बारे में वाक्य फील के बारे में कि डॉक्टर साहब जो अबाबील हैं वो तो बेसिकली इंसेक्ट ईटिंग बर्ड्स हैं वो ह्यूमन फ्लैश तो नहीं खाते या डेड ह्यूमन फ्लैश तो नहीं खाते तो मेरा सवाल ये है कि वो उनका गोश्त इतने बड़े लश्कर जो है वो खाया हुआ घुस कैसे हो गए जस्ट बाई पेबल्स जो कि कुफारे मक्का फेंक रहे थे और दूसरा मेरा फॉलो अप सवाल ये है सर कि वाई डज सच अ बिलीफ एग्जिस्ट जो कि इरोनस है इन योर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू so first of all you uh, so first of all the thing that you have to understand is the word ababil is not referring to the ababil that we know of the word ababil means uh, a group of birds so tairan the word is tairan ababil tair means birds and ababil means a group so the word ababil the when the when it is translated as birds is basically an urdu translation the word in urdu ababil refers to a type of bird but in arabic the word ababil means uh, a group of birds so basically tayr and ababil right. the word tayr is used for that and uh, i mean they just came to consume the meat of the animals they were they did not come and to throw the through through throw anything the quraish actually were the ones who were throwing those stones and the uh, animals had just arrived these meat eating birds these were vultures or eagles they had just arrived to consume the people who had been killed and slain and they were just there to eat their meat so they were not i mean throwing anything from their beaks as is generally misunderstood and the reason for this misunderstanding of, uh, of course is the fact that linguistically and uh, historically it does happen that at times when something uh, becomes famous uh, then people don't i mean really review it and they just continue to harp on the same tone and they continue to give it the same uh, direction so ever since our earlier tafsir for example in tabari in razi you will find this interpretation and it became so uh, famous that no one thought of anything else and no one thought that the words of the tafsir or the words of the verse uh, is not they are not true to its translation as i just said the word tarmi cannot be used for birds at all it has to be used for the quraish so the birds were not throwing anything it was the quraish who were throwing because rama always means to throw something like this there is no other i mean you can consult an urdu english dictionary and arabic english dictionary and you'll see the word rama is not used to for a, for someone to for something to be dropped from a height you'll never use the word rama for that so i think it was linguistically something that was untenable and then as i said that the law of god is something which is uh, discussed in so many places in the quran that unless you do your needful god is not going to help you remember what the israelites were told when they wanted to enter uh, palestine and they stayed back and they said to moses fazhab anta wa rabbuka faqatila inna ha huna qaidun that you and your god go and fight we are going to just sit here because we think that these people are very strong for us so the god, the almighty actually reprimanded them that this is not the way 
if you don't do your due, I'm not going to do my, my part. Thank you, Thank you so much for that, Dr. Salim. Uh, Sania, if you have a quick question, you can ask it now. Uh, Sania, if you want to unmute your mic. Okay, then we'll move Hello, on. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yeah, I have already uh, wrote my question in chat. Uh, okay. I, just, uh, I want to ask you, referring to the hadith, where Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam advised his son to change his doormat. So, uh, yeah. did the Prophet alayhi salam Label the women as doormat. Uh, what is, uh, what is your so I think uh, I we have discussed this narrative a number of times and I've also written on it. This is not a very authentic narrative, and it is from the Israelites, uh, as they called amongst the Israelites. Uh, this is something that has infiltrated into our hadith books, and uh, neither the Prophet Abraham, uh, in his rightful mind, ever did that, nor is it right to attribute it to him. This is not an authentic narrative at all. Uh, but it thank is in so hadith and uh, uh, thank to... you so much uh, asania um, uh, wait, second, okay. i have another question so we can uh, discuss it again in our next session but just a small uh, uh, conclusion that i might state before you that uh, when something comes into hadith literature it's not that it's always regarded to be true so yes it is found in our books but uh, it's not correct okay thank you so much Azakallah. No, Shafkat Saab, just a quick question, then I have to wrap up the session, please, to make it quick. Not a question, just uh, uh, something to, uh, for a friend of mine who asked the question. Sir, A.J. Arbery has translated the Quran in verse. Mm -hmm. He's right. an, an English author, and uh, he yeah. has translated in verse. And right. he says it's beautiful Arabic poetry-like for him, mm -hmm. and therefore his translation is available by the simple name of the Quran, by A.J. Right. So Arbery. Yes. So Arthur Jeffrey Arbery, uh, he was a uh, he was uh, he lived about fifty years ago. He was a friend of Allama Iqbal, also uh, not exactly a friend, but he did translate part of Iqbal as well. He was so yes, uh, that is uh, something that you can also study. So he did try to do justice to the Quran by translating it in in the form of rhyme prose, and uh, that is one thing that you might also study. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Salim. It was a wonderful session. Thank you for um, your wisdom.